The mafia take advantage of this man, not knowing he was the best in Korean army. An ex-special agent tries to save a neighborhood girl from a mafia ring. Even the mafias were surprised how good a fighter he is. Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to explain a 2010 thriller action movie named The Man From Nowhere. The movie follows the story of a dark and mysterious guy who goes on a deadly rampage after the kidnapping of the one person who he was close with in his neighborhood. Serious spoilers ahead, so sit back and enjoy. The movie begins with the story of a group of law enforcement officials who are about to catch a white powder delivery person at a nightclub. However, they were unable to discover any proof since a dancer had taken a bag holding the pills. Tarsik, a guy who works at a pawn store in a slum, recently purchased flowers. A little girl called Somi approaches him as he prepares to enter the store. Tarsik's relationship with his neighbors are often unpleasant. The little girl is the only friend he has in the area. Somi admitted to stealing Tarsik's possessions in the past, but she now says she no longer steals. In order to sell her MP3 player, Somi went to the pawn store. She could inadvertently see Tai Seek's meal on the table when she receives the cash. Somi claims to enjoy sausages. Feeling sorry for her, Tai Seek invites her to eat at his shop, which is also his home. He prepares whatever little food he got, but Somi is happy to have a hot meal and talk. While they were eating and chatting, Somi's mother shouted for her. Somi was very scared to hear her mother's voice and immediately hid under the table. This clearly shows that Somi's mother is not a very loving and caring mother. Taisik then lies to Somi's mother, saying that her daughter is not with him. Not believing Taisik's words, Somi's mother asks Taisik to open the door wide so that she can check. Taisik tries to knock Somi's rice bowl over so her mother doesn't get suspicious. After the bowl was dropped and caught by Somi, Taisik immediately opened the door and finally Somi's mother believed that Somi wasn't there. It turns out that Somi's mother is Hyo Jung the dancer who stole a bag filled with the narcotics from the nightclub where she works. Hyo Jung goes to the pawn shop to pawn a camera and a bag containing the powders. After processing the pawn shop documents for the woman, Taisik goes back inside and sees Somi carrying the flowers that he bought earlier. She tucked one of the flowers on her ear, making Taisik so angry that he snatched the flowers from Somi's hand. These white flowers are typically funeral flowers. Elsewhere, the Chinese ringleader named Om Young Ju is seen slapping one of his subordinates, Mian Siok, for having lost a large amount of drugs. Mian Siok tells the ringleader that he already knows who stole the drugs and promises to take them back. The ringleader gives Mian Siok three days to return the lost powders. Meanwhile, at Somi's house, a man comes to Hyo Jung and asks for the package she had stolen. Hyo Jung's silence makes the man angry and he beats her up. Little Somi silently watches what the man is doing. Frightened, she goes to Taisik's house and begs to stay for the night. Taisik lets her in, but when he checks her room the next morning, she's gone. In the afternoon, Taisik leaves his shop to go somewhere using a bus while carrying the flowers along the way. He listens to music using Somi's MP3 player. It turns out that Taisik visited his wife's grave. After returning from the grave, Taisik sees Somi being interrogated by two policemen on the side of the road for being accused of stealing a bag. Somi then points to Taisik, who stands some distance near the alley of her house, and tells the police that it's her father. However, Taisik immediately leaves the scene, leaving the cops confused. Arriving at a grocery store, Taisik sees Somi stealing an item. Taisik intends to pay for the stolen item, but the shopkeeper doesn't want to accept the money because he already knows that Somi often steals at the shop. The old man knows that Somi did that to get other people's attention. He suggests that Taisik occasionally takes Somi for a walk. Then Taisik meets Somi, who's crying in an alley. She asks for her MP3 player to be returned to her. She's even willing to exchange it for her lucky card. Before leaving, Somi said that she's very disappointed in Taisik, who ignored her. She doesn't hate him. She has a principle that if she hates someone, she'll forever remain alone as her life brings opportunities to hate almost everyone she comes across. When Somi comes home, she sees her mother tied up and tortured by the ringleader's men. On the other hand, Taisik is also visited by someone of the same group of men. Taisik gives him his wallet, thinking he's being robbed. The men laugh at him, but with a very fast movement, Taisik grabs the knife from one of the men. 
Not long after another of them gives Tyseek a cell phone, Tyseek takes the phone and hears the voices of Somi and her mother who have been kidnapped. Zhang Suk, the one in charge, asks Tyseek to give the camera bag that Hyo Zhang pawned at his shop to his men. Tyseek immediately obeys the orders, but Somi and Hyo Zhang still haven't been released. One of Zhang Suk's men instead shoots his comrades to distract Tyseek and then runs away, deliberately leaving his cell phone. The next day, from the cell phone left by the runaway, Tyseek gets a phone call from Zhang Suk asking if Tyseek wants Somi and Hyo Zhang to survive. In order to do so, he must deliver a package to a Chinese dealer who turns out to be the ringleader. Tyseek obeys the orders by taking the package in the car that's been provided. After completing his mission, Tyseek then asks the ringleader to free Somi and Hyo Zhang, but the ringleader doesn't understand what Tyseek is talking about. Suddenly, the ringleader receives a phone call from Man Seok. Turns out that Man Seok has trapped the ringleader to take over his business by reporting him to the police out of revenge. Not long after, police cars surround the building where Tyseek and the ringleader were. The ringleader immediately ordered his men to eliminate Tyseek, who he thought was Man Seok's man. Tyseek reacts quickly by jumping out the window and falling into a wide net. Seeing the ringleader try to escape, Tyseek tore the net and chased him with his car. However, the ringleader was able to escape from the pursuit of Tyseek, as well as the police. Tyseek got out of the car and accidentally saw the car trunk lid open. As he walks closer to the car, in the trunk he sees Hyo Zhang's body covered in stitches. Turns out her organs have been stolen. Seeing that Tyseek assumes that Somi has also faced the same fate at the hands of these men, the police find Tyseek staring at the body and they immediately arrest him, thinking he's the one responsible. Then they interrogate Tyseek before finally going to take the pawn shop. Ripping there, the police found the bodies of Zhang Suk's men. Elsewhere, an old woman deals with Zhang Suk's men, who then gives Somi to her. She turns out to be managing a place for children who are forced to work as narcotics couriers. Meanwhile, Tyseek manages to escape from the police station. Tyseek's escape from tight security makes the police try to find out about his identity. Turns out that Tyseek is a former covert operative for the South Korean Army Intelligence. He retired since his wife was killed by a hitman who was also pregnant at the time of the incident. Tyseek himself is now looking for the cell phone that Young Suk gave him, which he threw away in an alley then. He traced back the phone, went to the cell phone shop that picked it up, and asked the seller who the buyer of the cell phone was. The cell phone seller instead ordered his men to attack Tyseek. It was only after Tazing defeated them that the cell phone seller finally gave up. He gives Tyseek business card to the person who bought the cell phone. He also said that the buyer has a business in trading human organs. Tyseek immediately goes to the address on the business card, which turns out to be a discotheque. Tyseek tracks Du Shi to a nightclub using the information on the burner phone Young Suk gave him. One of the men, Rem Rawin, enters the room and opens fire on Tyseek as he asks where the brothers are, killing Du Shi in the process. Tyseek is shot as the two struggle to a halt. Tyseek discovers his old partner while bleeding out, and she conducts emergency surgery to remove the bullet. After getting well, Tyseek begs his companion to assist him in getting a pistol before returning to the city. Young Suk is killed after Tyseek discovers and releases numerous young slaves from a drug production facility. In the gang's condo, where a dozen gang members and Ram Rawan are also waiting, he finds the older brother, Man Seok. Man Seok reveals to Tyseek that he has slain So Mi and displays a jar with what he claims are her eyeballs. What happened to his younger brother is something he demands to know. Ram Rawan and Man Seok are among the gang members Tyseek murders in a fit of wrath. So Mi, who has been saved by Ram Rawan because she had been good to him, emerges from the darkness as Tyseek prepares to commit suicide out of sadness. The eyeballs in the container belong to the gangster surgeon who had been assassinated off camera by Ram Rawan. After Tyseek's arrest, the authorities allow him and So Mi to ride together. Taisi makes a stop at a tiny convenience store where he buys a backpack and other school materials while Somi is sleeping. He informs Somi that she would be on her own since the cops must remove him. He asks her for a hug before leaving and sobs during their embrace. That's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's movie, and for more such contents, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to like and comment on this video. We always appreciate your support.